Well, these are the words of the Apostle Paul uh, in the letter to the church in Rome. And my goodness, Paul is a bit ahead of his time, isn't he? Especially with these words. Whatever you do, however you approach faith, whatever you believe to be holy or not really necessarily holy, just be convinced in your own mind. I, I, it strikes me still how modern this kind of thinking is. Relative truth. I, I know that's kind of the hallmark of, of modern day thought and philosophy. I have my truth, you have your truth, and they're both valid. This is a far cry, I think, from what we would call classical Christianity. Uh, from, well, essentially the church and people like Candace and I, telling you what is right to believe in, and darn it, you better believe it. I hope I never do that to you. And yet Paul here is saying, whatever it is, just be convinced, really convinced in heart within yourself, and it is good. What great freedom that Paul extends to those in Christ. Such a freedom that no matter where you fall on the spectrum of practice and belief, God is seemingly welcoming all takers. As was the, the issue in the Church of Rome, those who abstain from eating certain meats, that was a big deal back then, it wasn't a vegetarian uh, meat eater thing, it was the, the meat you know, given to the sacrifice uh, for sacrifices for other gods and idols. And that was contended, should we eat that meat because it was given to another god? He says, look, if it's good before you and doesn't make you stumble in your faith, then eat. If it's an issue for you, don't eat. You're good either way, so long as you do it to the Lord. If you observe all of the high holy days and attend Mass at 5.30 in the morning and go to every uh, holiday on the church calendar, good. Go for it. Do it. If you don't, if you believe all days were created equal, and yes, even Sunday is up for grabs as far as worship and gathering together, good, fine, as long as you're convinced in your heart before God. If you're a vegan, if you eat purely barbecue, or if you do that paleo diet, all are welcome. If you're a Democrat, Libertarian, Republican, you're welcome. If you pray using a rosary, if you pray right before bed with the now I lay me down to sleep formula, or if you don't really stop and put your hands together, bow your head and close your eyes, but live a prayerful life always, all good. If you're a fundamentalist, if you're progressive, if you're somewhere in between and could care less what your label is, you're good. If you prefer the organ, if you prefer the guitar and drums, or a personal favorite, if you prefer rap, <laughs> you're okay. Be fully convinced in your own mind. Do whatever you will do, giving thanks to God. And as a matter of fact, in these ways, God will uphold you in them. There are seemingly no wrong answers. As freeing as this is, I also captured another side of this passage, or at least how it can be utilized. And these same exact words from Paul about freedom and faith can actually be used as extremely dangerous rhetoric. Being fully convinced in mind and heart, and being thankful to uh, respective gods, and being upheld, feeling upheld in their convictions and beliefs, in the name of God, suicide bombers find their way into the middle of crowds. Being fully convinced, giving thanks to God, and being convicted that they are doing the right thing and upheld, crusades are waged with the goal of forced conversion. Being convinced, thankful, and feeling upheld, individuals, uh, individual lives are demeaned because they differ from what one or one group is convinced of to be a right way of living, a true way of living. Or a holy way of living. What great, terrible freedom we have in faith. Paul seems ahead of his time with this kind of freedom. Yet his words don't lead us to absolute relativity, but lead us to a certain faith perspective that I would contend our current times probably wouldn't buy into nearly as much as it seems on the surface. Paul says that in this great freedom that you have, 
you actually belong to Christ. In the freedom that you enjoy, in all the practices that you are convinced of, you belong to one another. We do not live to ourselves, we do not die to ourselves. Whether we live, we die, and of course everything in between, we belong to the Lord. Suddenly, this grand freedom has an end. There is a direction, there is a purpose. And I think Paul is contending that in our freedom we are to live by the light of the one who grants it. And to live for the sake of those that Christ came and died for. I don't know why this stuck in my head, but it did. I remember um, growing up, uh, being taken to church. I, I'll, I'll attest I didn't have much of a faith life until the uh, beginning of college. But my parents took me to church on a regular basis to build the good morals and all that. And I remember as I started um, confirmation class... Uh, the pastor at the time offered this, this phrase that stuck with me. He said, being a Christian doesn't change who you are. And I think as a 12-year-old, that, that helped kind of diffuse some of the anxiety of what in the world is this? What language are they speaking? And what are they asking me to do in life? It was, okay, this is all good stuff. This is additional. This is beneficial. I can still be me. Well, I think in time, as I came into my own in my faith life, I was kind of calling the pastor out on these words. It seemed like as I read the words of Christ and of Paul and, and all the, the Gospels and everything in Scripture, I kept seeing the call to transformation. To not quite being who I was, but to something else, whatever that was. And yet today, still years later, I see this line of thought coming back full circle. That as a matter of fact, the most, the most faithful thing we can do as people of faith before our Lord is to be fully convinced of who we are and how we were created to be before God. The call is to be more of you, to own up to who you are more than to try to be something or someone you are not. That is not what Paul says here, and that is not what God looks for in God's children. You have real and ultimate freedom to be you, but no longer just for yourself. You get to fully be you for the sake of others. And this is freedom, and this is life-giving. As I uh, alluded to, one of, um, one of the ways I have kind of lived into my own calling and just owned up to who I am is my admittedly strange affinity for a genre of music called hip-hop, uh, or rap, if you will. Um, you know, white kid from the suburbs, rap, yeah, it's a little strange. And yet, my deepest place within me gravitated towards it, toward the artist, toward how they said things, what they said, and what they stood for. And it's something I haven't been able to let go. And I can testify that God has allowed me freedom to actually go deeper into this art form that I so deeply care about. Um, so to try to convince you that there is nothing within you that you are passionate about, that you care about, etc., that God won't use, I'd like to humbly offer you what God has used from within me. So with that, I would like to cue the music and allow me to testify.
I suggest a bold thing to you, as Paul does here in the words of the book of Romans. I suggest a very bold thing to you for each of you to take up for yourselves. Trust who you are. Trust who you are. Trust what you're passionate about, what you nav uh, naturally gravitate toward in life. Trust in how you take to faith in Christ. Because when it builds up one another in the faith, when it glorifies God and the character of God, and when it gives you a share in that divine joy that God so readily dispenses, there are no wrong answers. I'm going to get my voice back. <laughs> we now have freedom to give to God as best we understand it, and as best we feel led with our morning tithes and offerings, which I'll be the first to admit can at times be misconstrued as a bit of a dry thing. And, and yet, sorry about that. And yet, um, this, we have the freedom to give as we feel led, never as is demanded or expected. So, with that, would you join me in prayer as we go to God in faith? God, you grant us freedom ultimate freedom. We, there is no condemnation for those in your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you. May we live into this freedom, living before you in ways that, well, are fully ourselves because, God, you are the one who created us. May we give freely today as we feel best led. May you bless these gifts and use them for the purposes of your kingdom as it is in heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ.